Now, a little caveat. Cisco switches don't exactly just run spanning tree. Cisco switches don't run just spanning tree protocol. Cisco devices run what is called per VLAN spanning tree protocol, or PVST. Now, if I have five VLANs in my network, I will have five spanning trees running per switch in my network. So Cisco does not run one spanning tree protocol for all VLANs. Cisco chooses to run one spanning tree per VLAN. So if you have 10 VLANs, you are going to have 10 spanning trees running automatically. Why does Cisco do this? And this little five-minute lecture is beyond the scope of CCNA, but since you're learning that Cisco switches run per VLAN spanning tree, I think you guys should know why. And this is why. Let's say we have four switches connected to each other. This is switch one. This is switch three. This is switch two and switch four. Let's say we had VLAN 10 and 20. Now, if you were running what is called regular spanning tree or common spanning tree, CST, what would happen is this port may be, and let's say this is the root for both VLANs, this port would become blocking, which means this link would go unused for both VLAN 10 and 20. Now, in Cisco's case, Cisco switches would run a separate spanning tree for VLAN 10 and a separate spanning tree for VLAN 20. So in theory, what I could do is I could make switch one root for VLAN 10 and make switch four root for VLAN 20. This way, since this is root for VLAN 20, and this is root for VLAN 10, VLAN 10 traffic would be blocking here, and VLAN 20 traffic might be blocking here. So each link is blocking for a separate VLAN. However, it is being used for some traffic. So you're not wasting the bandwidth completely. You're at least using each link for VLAN 10 or VLAN 20 traffic. So since this is root for VLAN 10, this would be blocking for VLAN 10, but at least VLAN 20 traffic would be flowing through it. And since this is root for VLAN 20, this would be blocking for VLAN 20, but at least VLAN 10 traffic would be flowing through it. This, you, this is better load balancing and better bandwidth utilization. With common spanning tree, this link might be blocking for both VLANs, and this, then it's completely unused. So that is why Cisco chose to use one spanning tree per VLAN for load balancing purposes. Now, what else is different with per VLAN spanning tree? Well, the bridge ID field has been modified. So bridge ID now consists of a four bit VLAN ID plus 12 bit priority and then your 48 bit max. So your priority field actually has been split in two with the 4-bit VLAN ID and then a 12-bit priority. So let's draw these 16 bits out. And I'm doing this for a reason which will come in about five minutes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So on the rightmost side, or my right-hand side, Start with a one, double it, two, keep doubling it, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256, 512, 10, 24, 20, 48, 40, 96, 81, 92, 16, 3, 84, and 32, 7, 6, 8. If I add all these numbers up, I would get 65, 536, okay? So you have a four bit VLAN ID and a 12 bit priority field. So keep this 4096 number in mind for now. Keep this 4096 in mind. The default priority for a Cisco switch 
is 32768. And let's say we are running VLAN 10 in our topology. So the VLAN ID field would say 8 plus 2 is 10, and the rest of the bits would be turned off. So 0 is off and a 1 is on. So my total priority field actually, if we're looking at it the old-fashioned way, the priority field will actually say 32768 plus 10, which gives me 32778. Okay, this is how the bridge ID is kept separate for each VLAN, by adding the VLAN ID to the priority field. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you how spanning tree works on the lab.